What's up my friends, welcome back! Today we have a video with tests. I thought it would be interesting to show you how I make my tests before I start any new project. Obviously, I never start a project and just do it. I always have to make some tests and then when I get my good results I make a prototype. So this is what I want. Remember my portable soldering iron from one year back? Well, I want to make it fully portable and by that I mean I want to have the battery inside so we don't need an external battery and a cable. So I want to use this kind of battery and then design a new case and a smaller PCB and make it very compact. I also want to have a charging circuit with a USB connector to charge the battery. But this will give me a lot of problems. So first of all, the soldering iron tip that I was using is the T12, which works from 12 volts up to 24 volts. But the battery is only 4.2 volts. So I don't want to have 3 or 4 of these batteries inside of the case, because that will make it very big. So I will have to try different things. The first option is to use a boost converter and boost the voltage from 4.2 volts to around 20 volts. If that doesn't work, I also bought some 5 volts soldering iron tips that I will have to test. The boost converter circuit must be able to give me enough current and also be small in order to fit inside of the small case. And I also want it to be efficient, so it won't waste power from my battery. And all the PCB must be very small because now we would have inside of the case the battery, the charging circuit, maybe the boost converter circuit and the controller PCB. So we have to design everything to be very compact. As for these other two soldering iron tips that work at 5 volts, well I don't know anything about them because they have no brand. I bought them from eBay or AliExpress and all I know is that they work at 5 volts and one has 10 watts of power and the other one 8 watts of power. So in order to make my decision about this project, let's make some tests and maybe you'll also learn something on the way, which is the important part. So guys, let's get started. Video sponsored by GLC PCB. They have services for PCB manufacture of 2, 4 or 6 layers starting from only $2 for 5 PCBs of 100 by 100 mm Other services are the stainless steel stencil for soldering with solder paste and the SMT assembly, where they will solder the components for you automatically using high-technology machines for a professional finish. So just go to glcpcb.com, upload the Gerbers, select what you want and place the order in a couple of minutes. What's up my friends, welcome back! So we start by testing the boost converter solution. Remember, my soldering iron works at more than 12 volts, because that's what the T12 soldering iron tip needs, so we can change that, because the resistance of the internal heating element is 8.1 ohms, so that is a fixed value, so we need a certain amount of voltage in order to get decent current flow. I want my iron to be portable and have the battery inside, but I don't want to use 3 or 4 batteries in series, because that will make the product too big and heavy. I only want to use one battery cell of 4.2 volts. So in order to increase the voltage, let's test the boost converter. But first, let's see the power usage of this iron tip. When I supply the tip at 12 volts, as you can see, it draws around 1.6 amps of current. When I supply it at around 20 or 24, which is the maximum voltage, it draws around 3.2 amps of current. So for sure we need a boost converter that is capable to deliver at least 1.6 amps. This here is advertised to be a boost converter that could elevate the voltage up to 36 volts and have a current output of 2 amps. So I set my supply at 4 volts and connect it to the converter. I rotate the potentiometer till the output is around 20 volts. So now I try to connect the soldering iron tip. And as you can see the voltage drops to around 8 volts and the boost converter is drawing a lot of current. So this converter circuit is not good for me. So that's why I bought this other boost converter module, this is advertised to be up to 36 volts and 5 amps, so maybe this will work, and also it adver is advertised to be up to 94% efficiency, so let's test that as well. Ok, so now I do the same, supply it at 4 volts and set the output to around 20 volts. But when I connect the soldering iron, the same happens or even worse. And look, the boost converter is drawing around 1.3 amps of current and rising but the output is not able to deliver the voltage or sufficient current. So basically all the power is wasted inside of the boost converter, so that 94% efficiency must be for lower loads. So guys, I wasn't able to find the maximum power of this converter, but on some posts on the internet I found that it is around 30 watts. 
so even it could deliver 5 amps, but at 20 volts, that would be equal to 100 watts, which is way more than it could deliver. So obviously, the boost converter option is not good, because the T12 tip is around 75 watts. So imagine how big my converter should be in order to get that amount of power, and at the same time, how much power from the battery would be wasted. So let's make some tests with the 5V soldering tips. I have two types of 5V soldering iron tips. One is marked as 10 watts, and the other one is supposedly 8 watts. And I say supposedly because they have no brand, so I have to trust the seller, which in this case is AliExpress. The first test is to see the real power. So I set my supply at 4 volts to simulate the battery. I connect it to the 10 watts tip and as you can see, 1.6 amps are flowing so basically these are 6.4 watts. So now I supply it at 5 volts and as you can see, we get 2 amps. So this is basically 10 watts. So here we have another decision to make. Because if I use the voltage directly from the battery, my maximum power is below 7 watts. So is that enough? So I guess that it would only be enough for small soldering jobs with low amount of solder and heat dissipation. So another solution would be, instead of using this battery, to use three of these LiPo batteries in series. Because these are smaller and should occupy pretty much the same space. So like this I would have my 12 volts and be able to use the T12 tip. But at this voltage at 12 volts, the T12 tip as you can see, will draw around 1.6 amps. These small batteries are only 550 milliamps hour, so using this the iron will be on for less than half hour. Using PWM signal to lower the power when the temperature is high could increase that time to maybe 50 minutes, but even so that is very low. So what could I do? Use three of these batteries for a short time, or use this other battery with the 5V tip and only get 7 watts of power. To decide better, let's make the speed test of the 5V soldering tip. The more variables we have, it will be easier to take the decision. So I supply 4V at the tip and start the timer and test when it could melt solder. And as you can see, it took more than 40 seconds to be able to melt the solder, which is way slower than my T12 soldering iron, which as you remember, it could reach melting point in less than 16 seconds. Now I do the same test, but this time with a the thermocouple. And as you can see, it took more than 1 minute to reach 250 degrees, and more than 2 minutes to get over 350 degrees. But there is even more. At 360 degrees it got stuck. So I had to increase the voltage to 5 volts so it could now reach 450 degrees. So the speed is not that bad. I mean yes, it is slower than the T12 tip, but since it's portable we could accept that. The problem is the power. To test more I will try to solder something with this tip like this that is powered at 4 volts. So soldering some small vias on a drill PCB seems quite doable. Next some SMD components as well, I had no problems. But what about filling the PCB tracks with solder? This usually dissipate a lot of heat. So as you can see, if I go too fast, the solder is not melting anymore. So I had some problems filling this, and only when I went very slow I was able to do something. But now what about melting a ball of solder on a big copper pad on this PCB? This is an extreme test because the copper below will dissipate all the power. But even so I was able to melt it. I mean I feel that is a little bit slow, but it works. Now this was the definitive test at 4 volts. This is a thick full copper PCB that will dissipate all the power and as you can see, when the solder ball gets too big, it wasn't able to melt it anymore. The power is too low. Okay, so let's say that for now I go with this 5 volt soldering iron tip and the battery of 4.2 volts and the working setup of 7 watts. What else we need to have in mind? Well, the power regulation and the temperature read. Remember that with the T12 I was able to regulate the power with the PWM signal, because that's very easy to do. 
but I was regulating that according to the real temperature. So in order to read the real temperature we need a thermocouple. The T12 tip has a thermocouple inside of the ceramic heater and in series with this heater. So if we connect the terminals of the T12 to my multimeter, when I hit the tip with a candle for example, there should be a voltage drop created on the terminals as you can see. So now let's test the 5V tip because as I told you, I don't know much about this product. I connect it to my multimeter and yes, when I heat it up I get a voltage difference, so it must have a thermocouple inside. I don't really know if this is a K-type thermocouple or what are its characteristics, but for sure we could make this work. But now I make the same test with the small tip. And as you can see this also creates a voltage drop when heating. But playing with this one I've damaged it so I took this opportunity and opened it up to see what we have inside. And as you can see we only have the heating filament and vacuum inside. So where is the thermocouple? Well I'm not sure but maybe the thermocouple effect is created between the filament and the metal cover of the tip. To test that I make a connection between the filament and the metal and connect it to my multimeter. And yes, as you can see when I heat this up, the voltage drop increases. But once again, I'm not really sure if this is because of the thermocouple effect or any other physical process is involved. Ok so how we read the temperature? Well first we need to amplify the voltage since as you can see, the output from the 5V tip is just a few millivolts. So for that I use an amplifier in this configuration here. We amplify the voltage from the thermocouple inside of the heater and then we can read that with the Arduino ADC. As you can see now we have a measurable voltage that will increase with the temperature. Using the amplifier I was able to get to around 1.1 volts, which is way easier to measure with the Arduino and if I tweak a little bit the amplifier resistors, we could get to even higher values. All we have to do is to find the curve function between the analog read and the temperature. So I read the voltage with the Arduino and print the values on this display. Then I supply the iron tip and let the temperature to rise to run 400 degrees. Then I disconnect the supply and let the iron tip get cold gradually. And then I take notes of the real temperature and the analog read on the display of the Arduino. I do this and I get a curve like this. So now we could use this in the future code and control the power depending on the real temperature. So guys I think I make my decision and I'm ready to make a prototype. Without caring too much about the low power, I will use the 5V soldering tip, the 18650 Leon battery, a new and smaller controller PCB, a charging circuit with a USB connector as this one here that could easily charge a one cell battery and then I will design and print a new compact 3D case. So I will start making the PCB today and in a future project we will see the prototype. So I hope that you have learned something new today. Something about testing before you start a project and also something about how I usually prepare my projects. So you should also have learned something about these low power soldering tips and the thermocouple read and the amplification. In the next part I will have my PCB and create my fully portable soldering iron. So stay tuned for that. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, Electronoops here. This is the end of the video. And thank you very much for supporting my channel and watching my videos and maybe even subscribe to this channel. And I would like to give a special thank you to all our patrons for supporting my work, supporting my tutorials. And if you also consider supporting me, just check my Patreon on Patreon slash Electronoob, select any tire that you want. And like that you will be able to see my videos before the YouTube release. You can get in touch with me with comments or uh, questions. And by the way, I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, also our website Electronoob.io. So if you make an account, you will be able to post your projects, your tutorials, teach others your work. And also use the forum for, our, for the questions and all the doubts that you have. Thank you once again for supporting this channel, for giving a like to this video and also by subscribing and supporting me on Patreon.com. Keep up you guys!